Andy, is your sense that there is plausible uh, proof behind this theory that the coronavirus, uh, COVID-19, did originate in a Wuhan Chinese laboratory? Well, I think the important thing to understand here first is, is we want to differentiate where the pandemic started from versus the process that got this virus into humans. So I think it's clear that this is not a virus that has been engineered in any way by humans. Um, it seems to be a natural isolate. And we think that the way it became a human pathogen is because it went from bats into animals and then from animals into humans. And I think what the debate right now is about is that last step. Did that last step happen because of a person coming into contact with one of these intermediate animals and then launched pandemic? Or is it a situation where a laboratory was working with this under unsafe conditions, there was some sort of a lab leak and uh, that caused the pandemic? You know, working on these viruses for over 20 years, I can tell you that the, the, the safety concern, the safety precautions that have to be put in place are really quite high. Um, and so the likelihood of a lab release is really very, very, very low. However, as you've mentioned, there does seem to be some movement on the political side today and, and talk about information oh. that hasn't been released yet, which is, mm -hmm. I think, the big question mark right now. Andrew Vetbill emails in. He's watching the show this morning. Good to see that the dog is watching the show. Andrew Pekos, everyone listening with pets, including Francine Lacroix, can it go the other way? If we get COVID, can we give it to our pets or, for that matter, to animals of the agricultural persuasion? Yeah, uh, excellent question. There is evidence that uh, uh, companion pets, cats and dogs, can be infected with uh, SARS-CoV-2, and you, that's probably a result of their owners being infected. There's not much evidence of the virus moving in the other direction. So, um, so that's, I think, one good thing. When it comes to animals, I think we've seen that there are a number of animals that can be susceptible to infection. Um, we haven't seen huge outbreaks in those populations, but those are populations that we have to worry about. The mink farms in Europe and here in the U.S. were one example of that. Mm -hmm. um, and I think we have to pay attention to those kind of things because anytime this virus enters another host that gives it a whole new area to adapt and the virus that comes out of those hosts may or may not be better at infecting humans. Andy, it, it makes sense um, that a coronavirus that started at a market in Wuhan might have come from the coronavirus lab down the street in Wuhan. Um, and, and it's also understandable why you wouldn't want to immediately discuss that. I mean, politically, it's difficult for China, and um, there's no reason to rock the boat. How important is it to scientists to find out where this virus came from? Oh, it is absolutely critically important. And that's why I think you're hearing some scientists saying, we, when we approach this issue, we want everything on the table because we don't want to rule something out for political reasons or because we don't want that to be the reason the virus emerged. Um, I'm simply saying that the critical thing here is going to be understanding how that virus went from bats into some other animal and into humans. And that's going to tell us something about the pathway in which viruses can enter the human populations, and that's going to help us prepare better for the next pandemic if we can find ways to limit that exposure. Again, if it happened through a laboratory, then that's something we also have to uh, uh, understand. But even if that was the case, it was probably adapting before that to infect humans. And so we need to go even deeper than that to understand how the ecology of this virus uh, resulted in, uh, in something that can cause such a tremendous pandemic. Dr. Pekaj, as we head into this Memorial Day weekend, a lot of people are saying if they've been vaccinated, they don't have to wear masks. They can be with other individuals without worrying about getting sick or infecting others. Is the risk of getting ill or possibly uh, fostering some sort of additional variations pretty much off the table if you have been vaccinated at this point? Uh, I would say that if you're vaccinated, you certainly are, sh are, are protected to a great degree. We've had tr some tremendous data coming out, especially over the last four to five months, that shows how good the vaccine is working at preventing severe disease, at preventing uh, symptomatic disease, and even at preventing transmission. Now, nothing is 100%. And what I really worry about is the 40 to 50% of the population that isn't vaccinated right now. We're in, we're in a situation right now in the summer that the virus 
uh, is not spreading as efficiently as it did in the fall and the winter when people were inside. So I don't want people to get a false sense of how low the infection rate is because we're seeing a combination of vaccination and poor transmission conditions driving these low rates. Come mm. the fall, we may see another surge of cases, probably won't be as severe as they were last fall and winter, but we will see a surge well, of cases if we don't get more people vaccinated. 